Hello folks, welcome to today's demonstration video of my eShop project. In this video, I am going to explain about the basic product search option. So without further ado, let's get into this. As you can see, I am currently on the home page of our eShop. To do basic product search using keywords, we have to use this search bar here. For an example, let's search with the keyword Apple. To start searching process, we have to click on this search button here. So now I am clicking on it like this. Alright, now you can see our search results here like this. Then kinda by the bottom of the page, you can see our pagination features here like this. We can use these pagination features to go back and forth between our search results showing pages. As you can see, we are currently on our search results showing page number 1. All search results showing in this page are Apple keyword related ones as we expected. Let's go to our search results showing page number 2. As you can see, there's only one product in this page. Then we can search a keyword combined with the selected category. I'm selecting cell phones and accessories to demonstrate this. When searching with this combination, we won't get this AirPod listing anymore. Alright, let's click on search. Alright, as you can see, all the results that we are getting are now only Apple branded cell phones. Then we can even search products without a keyword at all. We can just search with the selected category like this. Let's go with cell phones and accessories again. Alright, now you can see our search results here like this. Let's get into the coding side of things. So now I am going to VS Code as you can see. We are currently on the home.php file. To keep this page running in the state it should be, I am linking some other files inside of it. First inside this head tags, I am linking bootstrap.css file, then bootstrap icons.css file, then our own style.css file. Then by the bottom of the body tags, I am linking bootstrap.bundle.js file and our own script.js file. Then inside of this PHP script, I am including our header part.php file like this. Then inside of this PHP script, I am including our footer section.php file like this. I am adding IDs like these to our search bar input field and our category selecting drop down menu. We are doing this to carry those input field data to the JavaScript side using the Ajax method. Inside this home.php file, I am adding an ID like this to these div tags as you can see. We are doing this to grab these div tags from the JavaScript side. We have to carry out that procedure to show incoming results on the home page. Then from this search button, I am calling a JavaScript function named basic search. I am also passing a value like this with it. Alright, let's go to our script.js file. You can see our JS function basic search here like this. I'm also grabbing the past value as x like this. Inside the JS function, I'm grabbing input fields using their IDs like this. Then I'm creating a new form data here like this. Then I'm appending those grabbed input field data into this form data like this. Then I am appending past value into this form data like this. Then I created a new XML HTTP request to request from the basic search process.php side. This already state changes here to figure out the current state of our request. If the state was 4, these codes are grabbing those div tags on the home page using their ID and changing their in HTML to incoming search results. Then from here we are sending our request form data to the basic search process.php side using the post method like this. Let's see our basic search process.php file. From top of this PHP script, I am requiring connection.php file to establish the connection with our database. Then from here I am grabbing incoming input field data like this. Then from here I am starting a search query as select all from product. If search bar is not empty with keywords and a category is not selected, this part of the search query is searching our database for products with titles or descriptions those are close to the search bar text. If search bar is empty and a category is selected, this part of the search query is searching our database for products belong to that selected category. 
If the search bar is not empty and a category is selected, this part of the search query is searching our database for products belong to that selected category and have a title like the search bar text or have a description like the search bar text. Then from here, if the passing value is not equal to 0, we are keeping that as a page number that is not equal to 1. If the passing value is 0, we are keeping that as page number equal to 1. Then codes here are searching our database using the query that we made previously. It's searching our database for product listings as you can see. Then from here we are limiting search results showing per page to 3. We are showing our search results as product cards so these codes are creating them. Then finally these are the codes of pagination features. When clicking on backward arrow button, if page number is higher than or equal to 1, these codes are subtracting 1 from the current page number. When clicking on forward arrow, if page number is more than or equal to number of loading pages, these codes are echoing nothing. If it wasn't like that, these codes are increasing current page number by 1. Then these codes are showing our currently active page number. So folks, that's all I have to explain in this video. Stay tuned for the next one. See ya.